uh, it says, well, yeah, you can use the maximum or the minimum. But here we also have this kind of thing that, you know, length technically takes in the list and returns an integer. So it works, but it might not be what you were thinking about. Uh, but so another key thing is that, you know, often it's not the case that uh, you only want a single identifier, right? Like, it's not often the case that you, your function is right in scope. So then we do this trick of setting the refinement level. So uh, here we set the refinement level to 1, and we'll think what that means in a bit. So then we run the same check again, but now we get these refinement voltages. And the definition of those are basically that uh, we allow up to n additional volts in the expression. And then we can read out from, uh, I'll explain how we do it in a bit, but we can read out, so if you apply a full well 1 to something of type int to int to int, then that expression will match uh, the type that's up here, that's uh, list of ints to int. Uh, we, can, we can also give the kind of level higher. Uh, so we do it you know, through 2. I mean, you refine full we refine full bar, and of course, you know, the const function will always work. If you just, <laughs> just take it and it works. All right? Um, so, and just to show you a bit uh, on that, we can deal with like uh, local things. So, I'm going to turn off the refinement level because it just, uh, it, it, it's a lot of output, so it's not really convenient for the talk. But anyway, let's set that to zero. And then I'm going to show you the code that Richard just showed us before. So, I color Richard here. Uh, and here we have two holes. So, you can deal with multiple holes at the same time. Uh, and here we have a hole for in the map application, and we have a hole here in xcons. And then if we load this file now, uh, it says, well, okay, it finds both holes. You can kind of, oh wait, I named them both A. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> you can name them different things to kind of figure out which hole it's talking about. But here, you know, this is the ladder hole, I guess. It's has the inverted type A to A. This is, of course, with scope type variables. Um, and for that, it says, OK, yeah, I can pick up the x cons that's like from the local where binding. And I know that all the type variables there are the type variables that you actually you were talking about in this type. And of course, it can also find kind of the uh, x here, because A is like a, is the only thing of type A that's in scope. And and you can say, oh, yeah, the only valid toolkit is that. Um, so, just some more background. So, this is kind of inspired by something in Agda and PureScript, where they can like find, you know, generate entire uh, programs just based on the type. But uh, we're in Haskell, so we don't really have the kind of Haskell yet. So, it's often the case that there's going to be a lot of things in scope that fit the Type, so we want to kind of be able to just suggest the list of things. Uh, so my idea originally was that uh, I was so I was going to do some hard work, but then I decided not to. Uh, and the idea was that okay, you have libraries of functions. So here I have a, a library of sorting functions, and I've kind of encoded uh, O notation in Haskell. It's a very simple encoding. It just deals with n and log n. And here I can like say, okay, here's a new type. It's just a wrapper around a list, but it's kind of I can annotate the properties that I want to hold uh, for binders of this type. So here I say, okay, uh, insertion sort. So it's with O notation, of course, if everything that's O of n squared is also O of n and uh, Q. So it basically says. If you want something that's O of n squared uh, and with memory complexity O of 1, then insertion control will uh, work for you. Uh, word sort has O of n log n and O of n, and quick sort is the same. Uh, so this is just the uh, approximate. Uh, so it's not proving anything yet, uh, but just you just annotate it a bit. And it says, OK, n log n, time complexity, but the space complexity should be log n. And then I can write, OK, so give me something. So I apply it to a list. Uh, and I say, OK, I want the result to be sorted. I want the result to be sorted in O of n uh, log n time. 
and you should use uh, all of n memory, and the result should be integer. Again. Oh no. <laughs> so I have first have to load the sorting in the scope, I guess. All right. And then it says, okay, I deduced that these were the parameters you gave it. And then it can search through the library. It says, here are the functions in scope which satisfy these type annotations that you gave it. So in this way, then you can like, you can write things that are, you know, they're functionally equivalent, like these both taken things and the taken the list and return list. We can kind of also search uh, via some annotations. Can I sort in linear time? Well, you can just assert that it's already sorted. Uh, yeah, if you say in linear time, yeah, yeah. it will exactly say yes. If you assert that it's sorted. Uh, <laughs> example that's always used for valid pulpits is the free monad. It's always like, uh, you, you watch the talk from type hold, they always show you free monad. Mm -hmm. And here we're like defining some of the free monad, we say the functor and applicant instance, but we're not interested in that. And here we're like, okay, we want to define the monad instance, but we're stuck. We don't know, you know, what should we put into this hole here. Uh, and, but of course, uh, valid pulpits will help me out. So we can load it in. And we'll say, okay, you know, I didn't find anything, uh, but you, here's the, you know, inferred type, and there's sort of things in the scope. But here, because we have the refinement of this, we can set the refinement level to one. We can load again, and it will find exactly the uh, right. So this is a lot of output. Uh, usually, my uh, text size is a bit smaller, so it's more readable. But anyway, here it says, okay, if you replace the hole with any of these things, it will have a right type. And here we can also notice that from the relevant findings, we have f of type A to 3FB. And here we have the inverse find function, which precisely takes in something of type A to 3FB. So if you apply this function to the f, then it matches the type. And that's exactly the definition of uh, this path. Uh, yeah, that's the definition we want to end up with. Okay, so um, let's go back. So how do I do it? Well, let's scroll over everything again. And yeah, so it's all based on the existing type checker and just going over in GAC. So when we would do this during error, uh, like when we, when we, when we hit a, a whole error, so it's a type error. And during error reporting, we kind of extract from the whole error the local context of that error. And we're also, we are doing it during uh, type checking, so we have the environment already. And from that, we get the candidates. So these are just local, uh, and the things from the local environment and the global reader environment. Uh, and we take the type of the whole as well from the whole error. And from the type of the whole, we use the uh, there's a function called tc subtype nc, which generates like subtyping wrapper constraints, which basically is the wrapper that takes you from type ID to the type of hole uh, during, after you've compiled. So we put that in. Uh, we also get the relevant constraints from the local context. So relevant constraints are, uh, so I didn't show it in the demo, I should have, uh, but so if you, if you maybe have a hole and you call, you say show on the hole. And you know what that whatever the return type of a hole is, it needs to implement the show constraint. And that's uh, contained in the local context. So that's when you hit the error, you know what the relevant constraints are. But you also have given. So you can also say, OK, I have something of type A, and it satisfies the show constraint. So we can extract that. And we also, so we can feed that to the type checker to get the uh, so it can figure out that A is uh, Anyway, now we just filter this. Uh, we filter the candidates by uh, using the simplifier to basically simplify these constraints and to check whether we can make PID fit uh, uh, the type of the hole. So we take the candidates, they go out. But uh, as we saw before, uh, we also sometimes get a lot of fits. 
Uh, so we'll try to sort it by approximate relevance. So I'll explain how that's done in a bit, but we kind of try to make it so the most relevant uh, suggestions are the top. So now we get this output. All uh, right, so now it's no longer in the process. Anyway, uh, so yeah, so this is a, an example of the output. How we do refinement of it? Well, we get this flag that states the refinement level, and then we generate n free type variables. So these are just fresh type variables. They have no strength on them or anything in scope. Uh, and then instead of checking for the path of a whole, we check for this path. So we basically say, okay, if you give me like find things which are functions that apply to these type variables, would give me the type of a whole. So then we generate the subtype and wrapper constraints uh, for that, we filter by that, and then when we have an output we can actually read from these three type variables. Since uh, the type checker does uh, constraint solving by uh, unification, so it has a side effect on these type variables, uh, which are actually kind of hard to deal with because I, I do so many checks on the same thing that I have to kind of wrap it. But we can read from these things, uh, and then we can put that into the output. So here, we would have said, okay, uh, it's A1, 2 uh, list of strings, and then the A1 during this uh, filtering and sample, uh, simplification will have be un been unified with the type chart for this, the string, and then this map will you need to apply it to something like that. So in this way, we can also show the, uh, the, the, what, the what the types you actually, actually need to be. All right, so we sort the output. Well, uh, so we have this, so if there are more than six matches, and six is kind of inspired by the relevant findings because they only show the six six fits, so I just decided to go with six. And it says, okay, some whole fits, yeah. Uh, so we want to kind of make sure that the top six, or just the, that it's in order, it's just kind of the most relevant thing. Uh, so we have two ways to do that. The first is to sort by size. So uh, here's the example I showed you before. Uh, and then we're trying to kind of sort by the size of type application. So here, lines, you don't have to apply it to any type. It just matches from the beginning. So it has size zero. Uh, repeat, here you have to make A take the type string. So you have to apply it to that string. And uh, string is a list of characters, so it's two constructors, so that's the size two. And for Menti, that's kind of, a, it's kind of far away. You're using the monoid instance of functions, using the monoid instance for lists. Uh, so, and it totals out to being like one, two, three, four, five, six uh, constructors total in that type. And the idea is that, you know, if you have the exact same type, it's probably very relevant. And if it's like very far away, like undefined or something, it's probably going to be, you know, it has to take the exact type and that's probably going to be a big size. And um, what we also do is that we, we kind of renub the various uh, applications. Since, uh, like in the full Dell example, it's like A to B, but if A and B are equal, it's kind of still not as far away. So, yeah. Uh, another way, which is uh, a bit slower, but works really well for our uh, application, is that uh, we can build a subsumption graph. So, a subsumption graph here means that, so repeat can be used anywhere lines can be used, and return can be used anywhere repeat can be used. Uh, and, and in the context of the theory, we say that the type of repeat subsumes the type of lines. So if you assign some value to the type variables here, we get the type of lines. Uh, so you can build up this graph, and then we do a topological sort. So we say, okay, if there's a connection from one node to another, then the first node should appear before the second node in the output. So in this way, we can kind of make lines from first, and then everything that's uh, more general than lines appear after lines, and then etc. Uh, and here's a comparison to size. So here we see that kind of read is earlier uh, because in here read would, would need to be applied to the exact to like the list of strings, but read uh, yeah and fail kind of comes earlier for size because you don't have to apply it to as much, but uh, it's maybe not as relevant as repeat, so it's kind of, um, I mean, th this gives you, it's a better approximation, you can sort things much faster because you're just sorting integers, but this kind of better captures what we want. Uh, so
So if you, if you have the time to spare, you can just enable this flag and do the sorting instead of the other one. Okay, so in conclusion, uh, I allow users to search type level documentation directly. So the idea is like that in Haskell, we often kind of try to encode things in the type to say it's an age or it's a phone number or whatever. And if you kind of pick good function names and good types, we can kind of make you, we can let you search that directly by this. Uh, also in case type development, so if we have types all over the place, we can get pretty good suggestions because there won't be <coughs> many options. Uh, it's very lightweight, it's like the variety via. It's, uh, you know, it's, it's using all existing machinery. I'm just invoking the type checker and I'm just, uh, it's just implemented in like one module, it's just plugging into the generation of the typer. So I didn't have to go mulling around with anything. It's very light and uh, yeah. And yeah, it's a welcome now. So you can just download GEC 26 and use it. Okay, uh, I have a bit more time, so I'm going to show you. Uh, oh, yeah, I have to say this. Right, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I don't consider built in syntax, right? Uh, so the problem is here that uh, I haven't found in GAC like a list of things that are functions but which are actually built in syntax. So it doesn't suggest these things because they're not in scope in the global reader. Uh, and I, I, I mean, I could hard code it, but then if some extension enables new syntax, I would have to handle that somehow. So it would be really nice if you could have just a list of things that are functions somehow straight away. Uh, Another thing I would like to do is to show more specific bits. So in this case, uh, everything that's floating is also fractional, but you can't suggest pi in there because you would need a tighter constraint on the A, and which you might not have. And it's like the idea that uh, you want to suggest maybe, okay, you have a functor here, but if you tighten it to an applicative, then you could use these things. Uh, and so that's that's what Idris does. So, uh, and it kind of displays it like, in parallel, so it would be nice if we do that as well. Uh, function the viewer argument. So I've been talking to uh, Shen Guo, who was, had a poster at the SRC, and he uses something called Sukin types to do this in Synquid. So, uh, and that, and they, they kind of condense the arguments to like a set, uh, and they are less general than Hindley Miller types, so we should be able to emulate it in the system. Then you can kind of say, well, you know, it's not the exact type, but if you flip around the arguments, or if you remove one argument, or if you get the same argument twice, or something like that, then it would fit. Uh, and yeah, this is the last part. Uh, we want to use, kind of specify invariant to specify behavior. So the idea is that, um, like, like in the, in the list of ints to int uh, example, uh, it, it suggests the length function, even though it's kind of doing something completely different, but you know, it might fit. So one idea is to kind of integrate this into liquid Haskell, where you can kind of state these invariants. You can say, yeah, uh, I mean, I want a function, I want to satisfy this invariant. Uh, and that would work really well. Uh, right, I have some, one minute of extra time, so I just want to show, here's the length again, but on master, you can give this flag, which is show docs of all fits. So then it actually takes the hat of documentation and says, oh yeah, what was the less than star equals operator? Well, it's this thing, right? Uh, so you can just use it directly. But there's one uh, issue that uh, there's currently kind of no way in Haddock to say, you know, this is the brief version of it. So in this example here, this is like, like five more lines of examples and stuff, which is not really what we want here. But yeah, if there was some way to do that, uh, that would be nice. But I mean, this works already, but we need some way to kind of tell things what is the short version of the document. All right, thank you.
hard to ship the raw data somehow. Uh, the statistical yeah. model, you compress the data into like linear regression or... Right, but then I would have to run with linear regression while I'm checking, right? Yeah, it's pretty fast. Okay, yeah, I'll have look into that thing. Uh, yeah? yeah? So the obvious thing to do with the refinement whole bit is to kind of recurse look for something that fills that hole in, right? Right. So, so, sort of so how, how, do, how hard would that be? I mean, it's not hard at all, but the thing is that, you know, this is just suggestion. You can just, you can do that. You can just, so the idea is that your IDE would just say, take the suggestion, run the thing again, and then you fill those holes. But it's kind of, because we get multiple suggestions, we can't really go so many levels deeper without having ambiguity right away. So, yeah. Uh, yeah? Oh, uh, you said these lists of possible fills are large. Can you give us an idea of how large, like 10, 100, 1,000, 10,000? I mean, for the lines example, it's like tens. Uh, but it's very, you know, if you have, like there was one bug which was, uh, it was some bug in template Haskell and we ended up with an unconstrained type variable and just matches everything in the below and also everything in template Haskell. <coughs> Uh, and it was, it was also using the old sorting method, so it's like, we thought the test was failing, but it was actually just time outing on trying to sort all these things. Uh, but, yeah, so it's, it's usually like, just maybe 50, it's, it's very complex dependent on, but like, if you do the right thing and kind of use, you know, alias and say, this is supposed to be a clock number, then you can get very clear uh, suggestions by the way. Uh, yeah. So this seems like it would be a potentially very useful teaching tool. Yeah. But for students to actually use it, it has to be as good at returning relevant things as the teaching assistant or instructor. Uh, otherwise, they will simply use up the human time to answer their questions. So I'm wondering, do you have any observations, um, formally or informally, on how often in practice this actually gets you what you want in those those first six results that you filter to? Right. So uh, in the paper, I actually have an example of like doing like programming exercises for beginners by Graham Hutton, and there I do like an example of you're supposed to write the how how function, which you know, takes a list and supposed to you know split it into two lists. And there, like, the first suggestion is just, like, split app to something of type thing, right? So you can get really good examples from the preloads right away. But uh, one issue with this is that it's kind of hard to configure because it's kind of hard to find a way to kind of pass information along to the compiler, to, like, about every whole poll. So, you know, if the instructor would want it to do some custom behavior, that would be a problem. But, I mean, it is... The idea with the, especially the valid hope is it's just, it's, if you're using an unfamiliar library, like the prelude, if you're a beginner, then you can use this to find, you know, I just want to go from this thing to this thing, and how do I do that? Right. Uh, uh, do you have the opportunity to resume uh, compiling if there's only one match for so you can uh, No, I mean, it's it's already a type of, so, I don't know if I can recover from that somehow, but, yeah. <laughs> okay. yeah. Yeah, so one of my favorite features in most of my editors is the fact that if I have a hole somewhere in the program, I can use the type and the will still spit it out of the yeah. other like, toolbox. Um, have you gotten this working with any editors, and if not, are we telling anybody about the editors? Uh, so I know that there's something going on in hero mode for Haskell, which is basically used to this to kind of come up with uh, like, like autocomplete suggestions. So just, you know, you just put a hole and just gives you a list of five things that work. Uh, but I, I, I'm not really, I don't know how far along it was. It was just like a GitHub issue. Thing. I'm not sure if it's released yet or not. Thank you. Uh, yeah. Uh, would it be possible to filter the list of whole bits by annotating the whole with the list of variables that could appear? Uh, maybe, but the, the issue is that we don't really have special syntax for kind of what 
applies to this hole or not, right? It's only, I can only pass the information via the pipe to the hole. So, but we're, 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 I'm thinking of, I'm trying to work out how we could, especially, like, it would be useful to say, you know, search only this module or stuff like that. So, I'm, I'm, and also these invariants. So, I'm trying to figure out how we kind of add additional syntax things to be able to give it more information. But then I would have to, you know, mess with the parser and stuff, so I didn't want to do that in the first place. You could use and fragment on the module then. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, you could do that. But do they, yeah, we're not, maybe it, yeah. But we're looking at that. Okay.